In this video, I am going to explain you about ring counter. Before going to learn about the ring counter, firstly we have to know about the shift register. Here, this is the definition of the shift register. A synchronous sequential circuit that will store and move n-bit binary data either serially or in parallel in n number of flip-flops. By this definition, we may say that Shift register is a circuit which is going to consist of a group of flip-flops. Here, flip-flop is nothing but it is a memory element which is going to store the binary information like 1 or 0. So, one flip-flop is capable of storing one binary bit. So, when we want to store the binary information more than one bit means we have to use more number of flip-flops. For example, if we are using n-bit binary data mix, we have to use n number of flip-flops. By this circuit, shift register, here it is saying it is a synchronous sequential circuit. Synchronous means in this shift register, how many number of flip-flops we use? Those all number of flip-flops are clocked simultaneously. By Single clock pulse. If we are giving clock pulse to that circuit, by that clock pulse itself, all the flip flops are going to be triggered at a time. Now, and it is going to store and move the n bit binary data, which shift register is capable of storing the binary information and it can be able to move the binary data either serially. Serially means it can move the binary data towards the right side or towards left side and it can move the binary data parallelly also. Now this is the definition of the shift register and coming to the next point, a shift register can be used as a counter with the serial output connected back to the serial input is called shift register counter. Now coming to this explanation, if we are using a 4-bit shift register means the last flip-flop output is going to be connected back to the first flip-flop input. So here the most of the common shift register counters are going to be two types, ring counter and Johnson counter. In this video, we will learn ring counter. Now we will consider the working operation of ring counter. Now, this is the logic diagram of 4-bit ring counter. Here, we are going to use 4 number of binary bits means we have to consider 4 number of flip-flops. In this circuit, we are going to use D type of flip-flops. Now, here, in this logic diagram, these 4 D type of flip-flops are connected with each other. That is nothing but the output of the first flip-flop is going to connect with the input of the second flip-flop. And the third flip-flop input is going to be connected with the output of the second flip-flop. And coming to here, the fourth flip-flop input is connected with the output of the third flip-flop. And the important point here is that the, in any ring counter, if we consider either 4 bit, 5 bit or 6 bit, the last flip-flop output is going to be fed back to the first flip-flop input. This is the most important. This is the most important point we have to remember. Now, this Q4 output is going to be connected with the input of the first flip-flop. And in this logic diagram, it is also consists of the clock pulse here and the clear and the preset input pins. These clear and preset input pins are asynchronous inputs and about this asynchronous inputs I already made one video. I am going to provide that video in the description box. You go through that one. Now coming to this logic diagram, before giving clock pulse, we have to give the clear input pin firstly. By this clear pin, we are going to make the outputs of First flip-flop, second, third and fourth flip-flop outputs are all are going to be zero. That is nothing but 
Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 outputs are going to be 0 by this clear pin. Now, next we will consider this preset input pin. This preset input pin will make the first flip-flop output Q1 is going to be 1 here. So, by this, before applying the clock pulse, so nothing but 0 clock pulse is here. So, before applying the clock pulse, with this preset pin, this Q1 output will be going to be 1 and the Q2, Q3, Q4 are going to be 0. Now, then we will apply the clock pulse here, first clock pulse. Here, if we see, this clock pulse is all over. There is one small circuit here. That is nothing but it is a negative adjudicatory clock pulse. That means when there is a transition from 1 to 0, then only clock pulse is going to be trigger that flip flop. These are the regarding waveforms of clock pulse. The first flip flop output Q1, second flip flop output Q2, third flip flop output Q3, and the fourth flip flop output. Q4. Now we will apply the clock pulse first. This is the first clock pulse we are going to give to this logic diagram. This clock pulse is going to be trigger all the four flip flops at a time. So when this clock pulse is applied to this four bit ring counter, this Q4 output is going to be given to this first flip flop input. So by that the Q1 output is going to be 0 here. And before clock pulse the Q1 output is 1 here. So this one is given to the input of the second flip flop. So by that one Q2 will become 1 here. Next the Q2 before clock pulse the Q2 output is 0 here. So, this 0 is given to the input of the third flip flop. So, by that one, Q3 will become 0. We, we have to remember here the D flip flop truth table. In the input side, whatever the binary bit will give, if we give 0, that will be transmitted to the output side. If we are giving 0 bits, after clock pulse, the output is going to be 0. If we are giving 1 at the input side, after clock pulse, the output is going to be 1. So, by that one, here Q4 is also 0 here. So, this is the regarding waveform here. Before clock pulse. And this is the waveform. After applying the first clock pulse, the Q2 will be 1. Q1 will be 0. Q2 will be 1. Q3 is 0. Q4 is also 0. So, that is the sequence we write here. 0, 1, 0, 0. Now, we will apply the second clock pulse here. After applying the second clock pulse, what will happen? This Q4 is again given back to this first flip flop. By that, it will be Q1 will be 0 and this 0 as input to the second flip flop means Q2 will be 0 and this one we are going to apply for third flip flop means Q3 output will be 1. By that Q4 will be 0 here. Now if we see here, after applying second clock pulse, the count sequence is 0, 0, 1, 0. Now then we will apply the third clock pulse here. We will apply third clock pulse here means we get 0 here and this 0 we may get 0 here. Q3 will be 0 and this one is going to be transmitted to Q4. This is the regarding waveform 0, 0, 0, 1. Then we will apply the fourth clock pulse here. By applying the fourth clock pulse, what will be happen here? The fourth flip flop output Q4 is going to be given as input to the first flip flop. By that Q1 will be 1 and the remaining Q2, Q3, Q4 bits are going to be 0. So here for a 4 bit ring counter, we have to use 4 number of flip flops and waveforms. We are getting here 
these waveforms are going to be repeating for every four clock pulses. So here, when we apply again fifth clock pulse here, the same pattern is going to be repeated here. See, after applying the fifth clock pulse, we are going to get zero, one, zero, zero. And next, after applying six, zero, zero, one, zero. After applying seven, zero, 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 one. Then, when we apply again the eighth clock pulse here, this one is transmitted to the first fifth of one, and these three zeros are transmitted to here. So, how how much number of bits of ring counter if we consider that many number of clock pulses we should use? Then, after that clock pulses, the sequences are going to be repeating in similar fashion. Now, this is the working operation of this 4 bit ring counter and this ring counter is always used for counting the number of clock pulses. Thank you.